everyone's Pete here. So I've got my uh, Armour 3S BLX here. Uh, thought I'd do a follow up to my unboxing and top tips video because uh, I've run this a lot since then and uh, made uh, quite a few more changes. So um, I thought I'd run through the changes and uh, other things that you should check on these. And uh, at the end, I'll do a bit of a review of what I think about this and uh, compare it to the granite. OK, so on the first video, we tackled such things as uh, thread lock in the uh, hubs to make sure they don't come apart. So uh, check that video out if you haven't done already. So in this video, we're going to be looking at what I've done with the suspension, which is to uh, reduce the ride height a little bit by putting spacers inside the shocks and also using thicker shock oil to sort of firm the ride up a bit and improve the cornering. So we're also going to thread lock the screws to the motor to make sure it doesn't move on the motor plate now that it's a sliding adjustment on that. And I'm going to show you how to make a metal brace for the shock towers because uh, I did break one on my granite so I've made a sort of metal brace which uh, really helps. Now on the previous video I talked about strengthening the body but I hadn't actually done it at that point so I'll just quickly show you what I've done. So um, what I've done is a combination of uh, Gorilla Tape and sort of double sided number plate tape and spare plastic packaging. Um, so I've got the packaging there uh, where the body holes are. Um, it would protect against the um, shock towers although because the body mounts quite a bit above the shock towers on this car it doesn't seem to be such a problem as it was on the granite and then it's just say so it's tape all around the edges so i did crack a bit at the front um because i haven't put tape around there but i have now so yeah it's generally the edges that uh, that crack so yeah um that's quite a lot stronger now so we'll have a look at thread lock in the motor screw. So we need to get this power module out. I did go over how to get this out last time, but we'll just uh, do it again. Um, might be a bit more difficult now that uh, everything's a bit more grubby. Okay, so that's the uh, telescopic centre drive shaft. Need to do is get a screwdriver down in here and just sort of ease that forward a bit. See, whilst pulling this up, to get loose on the clips. There you go. It wasn't too difficult. So just unplug the motor. So the fans plugged in there. And that is that. Yeah, you can see the dirt under there. Just going to give that a blast with my air duster. As you probably clean this bit up, I'll just show you. I'll put grease around this before I put it back in. And the idea was to sort of make more of a seal between this and the bottom of the chassis um, to stop the dirt going in. I think it's worked. We'll sort of find out when we open this up. But um, yeah, it could do with some sort of thicker grease, really, because I have used Tamiya AW grease before, but uh, it is pretty expensive. So I need to find a sort of cheaper, thick grease to go around there just to make that seal so the grit doesn't find its way under there. Okay, so seems pretty clean in here. So I think my uh, grease around the bottom of there has done all right. Okay, so just looking at the mesh, it sort of looks uh, looks about right. Now I would say I had a problem um, with the first motor after not very long. Um, it was making a terrible noise, and uh, when I got in there found that the motor shaft was wobbling about and the bearing had gone inside the motor. So I've now got the Armour branded one, the shop swapped it for me. Um, so I don't know what happened there, I don't know if the mesh had gone out on it or what, but um, yeah, it didn't seem to work for very long. Anyway, I've got the Armour motor now, so I'm happy with that. So I did thread lock this before, but I just done do it to show you what I did. So, oh, blimey. Okay, so really it's just a matter of sort of cleaning up the screw with a cloth and uh, sticking a bit of the old thread locker on there. So it's the blue one, which is medium. Let's clean up the plate as well. Okay, and this time I'm going to put them on. I'm going to uh, use some washers as well, just to sort of spread the surface area of the screw a little bit. So um, I'm going to put some thread lock on the threads, but I'm also going to put some on the head there because I think that will help to stick it onto the motor plate there. Would 
so you don't get this thread lock on the plastic parts it's very bad for it okay, it's got that loose there so get the mesh back where it should be so one thing to note I've got the uh, 15 to pinion on here I just wanted to have quicker acceleration so uh, yeah I've just changed it for that so I seem to remember when I had the 20 tooth pinion gear on this when you undo these to get the motor out I think the pinion doesn't actually fit through the hole in the back of there so uh, what you got to do is get your uh, get an L-shaped allen key like that and uh, get the get the pinion off uh, first before you can get the motor out and obviously also if you've got the one with the e-clip you've got to get the e-clip off with a little uh, screwdriver or something now while you've got the power module open have a look at this bearing and uh, just check it hasn't seized up because uh, mine did do despite the fact that version 3 armors now i've got the rubber seal bearings it was seized up after going through the water and mud and everything i've actually replaced this one um it's worth if it has seized up it's worth trying sort of like uh, you know gt85 just stick it in a little tub or something and blast it with that or uh, WD-40 and you can sort of free them up but um, I had these ones uh, they're not branded I don't think but they're, they're a bit more decent I think than the ones armor supply so there's that one and also the one on the back of the spur gear there seem to be the most likely to seize up okay I think that's about right there's a slight bit of movement there so that's right so I'll tighten them up properly up the uh, excess thread locker what I would say is I'm not so keen on this sliding motor mount thing because there's always the chance that it's going to slide out of position uh, whereas the ones with the preset holes like on the version twos uh, is never going to be in the wrong position you know because I'm only ever going to have a 15 tooth or a 20 tooth pinion in here so um, I will probably swap it for one of those but in the meantime that is nice and thread locked on So uh, like I was saying before, I'm going to put a bit of grease around the bottom of there uh, before I slide this back into the car just to help the grip stay out. Okay, next up I'll show you what I've done with the suspension. Uh, what I was finding with this was that uh, it was riding a little bit too high and uh, around the corners it was toppling over a fair bit and uh, I thought the suspension was too soft. It sort of depends what you want to do with it, but um, I want this to drive more like a rally car. Um, so, you know, I want to drive it over the uh, short grass and uh, do cornering and slides with it. Uh, so it depends what you're going to do with it, but say I wanted to have firmer suspension so that when it goes around the corner it doesn't sort of tip it kind of just uh, if it gets to the end of the traction just sort of starts to slide and um, I'm pretty happy with how it is now so uh, yeah I'll just show you what I've done with the shocks uh, I won't take this one off I've got some spare ones like this that I uh, took off the granite because I put some different ones on the granite right so this is the shock uh, you can just get this red ring off the top of here first easiest way is to stick something through there then uh, use some pliers to unscrew it Okay, that lets you take off the uh, spacers there and the spring. Okay, then there's a sort of little capsule containing the O-rings in the bottom of there. You need to unscrew it. Um, there's a little slot in there and a key there. And you can just push them together to unscrew it. What I'm going to do, though, is to use uh, with the tool they give you with the car, um, just to slot that in there. Gives you a bit more leverage. So what I'm intending to do is put a spacer in here to uh, reduce the overall height of this when it's fully extended. Uh, it's only about four mil long, something like that. Okay, let's just unscrew this. Oh, I think I put that on the wrong way. The last time I think that washer is supposed to be facing downward. Okay, so that comes off there. Okay, we don't actually need to take this off for what we're doing today, but it's worth saying that if you had the version two, uh, which had the leaky shocks then 
in here if you prize this off so that's where your o-rings go uh, there's a little spacer in between so you sort of get them out of there and these are the red silicon ones i can't remember if these were the armor ones or the tamiya ones but they all seem to fit and cure the problem of them leaking so uh, for a spacer, say just uh, reduced it by about four mil. What I had was um, some of these spacers from the Tamiya uh, shocks. They always give you these sort of um, bits and bobs because uh, it depends what kit you've got uh, as to which what height you want the springs to be. Um, so you just need to find something that you can thread onto there to um, reduce the stroke of the um, damper. Um, could use a bit of tubing or something. It just needs to be something resilient enough to uh, withstand, uh, you know, a lot of movement. Okay, so you put that onto there, and then put your piston top back on. So I'm sure the washer there is supposed to face downward, and then put your nut on the top there. Um, I'm not going to leave this like this because, say, this is the spare set for the granite, so I want them all to be the same. Um, so, yeah, well, that's how you would do that. Okay, so for the centre, I was using this 1000 CST oil. I think that's the same as 80 weight. Um, but because uh, this is my granite shock, uh, I'm going to use this 600 because I want uh, the granite to be a bit softer suspension. So I'm just going to make sure this is topped up. In case uh, we lost any while we were fiddling about. So you don't need to top it up uh, all the way because um, say some of that will come out as I put this back in here. One thing I would say is worth just checking that the uh, ring there, the rubber ring isn't getting pinched because um, it can do as you tighten that up. So you've got to be careful and see a bit of the uh, oil is coming out there. Carefully tighten this up. Probably tight enough. See, that's coming out of there a little bit. Um, but yeah, that looks all right to me. And that feels nice and damp. So yeah, jobs are good. And the rubber seal has caught a little bit as I was doing that up. But uh, it's difficult to get it uh, tight where uh, it's not poking out a little bit. But anyway, it seems to be making a good seal. So that's all right. Let's get it back together. Right, so that's that done. Okay, let's do the old drop test. So the bottom of it does still hit the ground if you drop it from high enough, but really, that's pretty good. Okay, next up I'm going to show you what I've done with the shock towers on my granite, which are the same as this. First things there, I've got these nice metal shocks. These came from the States via eBay. Um, can't remember exactly what they're called. They seem to be unbranded anyway. What I really want to show you was the uh, brace I've made here for the shock tower. Now, I don't claim to be an expert metal worker, as you can see, but it does the job. So um, it's screwed in with self-tapping screws into the uh, plastic of the tower and then holes there for the screws. So it's just the same screws. Uh, as before so I'll just show you with a separate um, shock tower that I've got okay it's entirely possible to do this while this is all still on the car but I happen to have this spare one from when I replaced the uh, back one on the granite and a little bit of uh, spare aluminium or aluminium if you prefer uh, so this is two mil thick uh, it's 40 mil high but um, so you could use steel I guess anything you've got uh, so basically you just need to offer it up to the tower and draw the shape around with a pen. Okay, I'm not going to go in at the top there because um, that doesn't get in the way of anything if that goes straight across the top and that would be a bit stronger. Very useful if you've got some sort of vice. Uh, I don't mean like drinking or gambling, I mean something to hold the metal in. So I'll just stick that in there. Okay, so I'm going to use me junior hacksaw and cut it out. Right, so I'm not a professional metal workist as previously discussed. I messed up the first one, so uh, to go into the metal that was a bit uh, battered up at the end anyway. So that is that. It's a couple of notches out there at the 
bottom because that's where the bumper mounts. Um, so what I need to do is just make some holes to screw it onto this. Also what you need to do is just to cut these sort of lugs off here so then the aluminium can lie flat on there. Right, so if you look at this, I want to sort of screw the screws in uh, so it kind of goes into this honeycomb thing. It's uh, hollow under there. So I want to sort of put some screws kind of there, 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 I think. All right, so I can get the holes in the right place here for the uh, shock mounts. I'm just going to uh, hold that on there and then I'm just going to put a bit of ink on this cocktail stick and poke through. Okay, I can just about see that. Okay, so just put three mil holes there for the uh, shocks and those bits to fit it on. So uh, yeah, let's attach it to the car. Okay, so I need to take these two out and also I'm gonna take uh, these two out that hold the bumper on to uh, give us a bit more space to drill into this in a sec. Now, uh, first thing we need to do is cut these off like I did on the other one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with these is to uh, drill some two and a half mil holes into the plastic uh, and then use these self-tapping screws that are spares from a Tamiya kit. Um, I guess you could use machine screws and uh, as long as they came out somewhere on the other side, you get a nut on the back, you could do that. Okay, it seems fine to put the bumper back. Okay, that looks good, uh, much stronger now. It's off camera, I did one for the back also, same method. Uh, so like I say, I'm not a great metal worker, but um, these are functional rather than uh, for decoration. So um, yeah, much stronger, I'm happy with that. Okay, there's quite a lot more things I actually want to talk about with this, but I'm aware this video is getting a bit long. So uh, what I'm gonna do is briefly go over a few things uh, and then what I'll do in the future, I'll make a video uh, in more detail about how to do these little uh, upgrades. So first up, I've upgraded the servo. Now the one that came with it wasn't bad, but I put one of these JX EcoBoost servos in and they really are incredibly quick and responsive. Okay, now there is a problem with upgrading the servo on these because the version three uh, arm has come with this um, Spectrum S651 servo, which has got a 23 tooth spline. And by that, I mean, I'll show you on this servo, it's that bit there and how many teeth and what size that is. Uh, the version twos had a servo with a, a 25 tooth spline, as does the JX EcoBoost servo. Um, so that means that your servo horn that is supplied with this, which is also the servo saver, isn't the right size. Uh, but what I found is I, I was able to just offer it up to the servo and just put the screw in and sort of mash it on, which isn't really the right thing to do. Uh, it has been okay, um, but really the correct thing to do would be to get the servo horn from the version two, which has got the uh, the 25 tooth spline. But uh, like I say, I have managed to mash it on there and I've got away with it. Okay, another thing I've done uh, with the receiver is in this box uh, here under the ESC and they say it's a waterproof box but uh, I don't think they ever are really because um, it's got the bit where the wires come out. So um, what I've done is to uh, use the hot glue gun method. I've got a video uh, I did of that. Uh, you basically have to take the receiver apart and put hot glue in being careful not to glue up any switches or anything but um, so the receiver itself is now waterproof so if water does trickle in there which it might do if the car goes underwater uh, it won't be harmed. Okay also although this car comes with uh, ball bearings it doesn't come with bearings in the steering and they go under there there's four of them and they are the size uh, five by ten by four mil uh, and what you need to do to get them in um, well you've got one do the steering I'll show you um, to get to the end of the servo horn you have to put the steering to one side and then you can access that in there and that detaches the uh, end of the servo horn from the steering linkage and then you've got to get the um, shock tower well it's the top of the gearbox as well off you've got to take these 
four off, I think, from memory, and then uh, obviously like the tops of the shocks and the bumper and get that out. Um, like I say, I'll probably do a video to detail that. Uh, it's a bit of a fiddle getting all that out of there, but um, it is worth it because over time grit's going to get in there and that's going to, you know, get a bit loose. So ball bearings are better. I have done it on the granite and uh, it works well. And also the uh, pivot balls with the uh, suspension and the steering are plastic and they do wear out pretty quickly if you're out in the dust and everything because obviously there's a lot of movement going on. So what I've found and I've put onto the granite is uh, it's a hot racing uh, pivot ball set uh, which are metal and um, I'll show you that in a sec when I've got the granite out. So this is the granite, I don't know if you can see in there, but the little uh, red bits of the uh, aluminium pivot balls uh, seem to work quite well. Okay, so let's do a bit of a review of these and I'll start with the granite. Okay, it's worth saying that uh, I'm really an RC basher. I've never done racing. And so the uh, object is just to go out with these and uh, have fun, do jumps, blast mud around the place. Uh, and this for me is pretty much the ultimate at that. I mean, uh, I can't imagine anything uh, better. Uh, you know, just the form, the size of it's uh, good. I know you can get great big, bashers but um you know it's very solid uh so i like the design of um how easy it is to sort of uh maintain this so um yeah i've had uh problems uh i was discussing the motor thing that i had with the senton uh i had a problem with the first esc on this so um fair play to model sport who uh who resolved it very quickly um and sent a new one out but um, so there are issues and say with the version twos, there was a thing with the shocks, which you can um, get over. Uh, but, you know, it's worth uh, it's worth doing a bit of work on these. I don't mind. Uh, you've got to expect, you know, a car that's doing uh, nearly 50 miles an hour. I think it will do 50, but um, it's just a bit uh, it's just a bit difficult with the tires ballooning. I think I've got it up to about 46. I might have done 48 once off camera. But um, yeah, for me, this is probably the ultimate uh, RC for what I'm doing, um, you know, great for backflips with the shorter wheelbase than the other three S's. Um, yeah, just really uh, great fun. So uh, I would definitely recommend it at the price. Just be aware, you know, obviously as with any RC, not perfect out of the box and you will have to maintain it, um, you know, and uh, maybe do little upgrades, but that's half the fun so uh yeah it's a definite thumbs up for the armor granite i would go so far as to say that if i was only allowed one rc car i think it would be this one uh obviously i haven't owned uh, every rc car out there but uh, i've had a fair few and say for what i'm doing uh this is you know fun quick tough uh pretty easy to maintain and everything so yeah brilliant okay so with the senton uh, one of the different sort of driving experience to the granite uh, i think these are more about sort of um sending them in the direction that you want and um sort of racing um so we don't uh, ever really race properly although we do sort of chase each other's cars about and this uh type of design especially now i've sort of slightly lowered it and firmed up the suspension really good at uh, cornering um yeah it sort of drives uh, more like a rally car uh so yeah really good fun in a different way except like i was saying before if i could only have one it would be the granite but luckily uh, i'm allowed to have more than one so um yeah this is good i mean it would almost be worth getting the entire 3s range because uh, i've had to go on the typhon of my friend nicks and that was really good too um and possibly big rock in the future uh so yeah i mean it just depends what you're going to do with these uh as to which one you should choose um it's worth saying that uh because of the wheels being under the body this is a problem on rally cars that you get and i've had with the tamiers and that is that it throws all the mud in i mean it's got the mud guards inside there which protects against the dirt coming off here but um the back wheel throws all the mud in there and um you know you can get huge amounts of uh, dirt all in the all in the workings so really uh this is probably better for the sort of um grassy areas uh it's pretty good at jumps it does sort of catch the air under the body like uh, short course trucks tend to so probably better for the smaller jumps with the bigger jumps it tends to sort of sail 
uh, like a kite and sort of floats down, um, you know, slightly uncontrollably. I put a bit of a hole in the back just to try and get some airflow through here. You probably need to do more, but I don't want to reduce the strength of this too much because, um, you know, the more cuts you put in it, uh, the weaker it's going to be. So, um, yeah, I would say, uh, you know, if that's the type of driving you want to do, or if you uh, go, I've seen these uh, on RC courses and uh, they do look really good at racing. So, yeah, you just got to think about what type of uh, terrain you're going to be on and choose which truck is best. I mean, possibly the Big Rock is uh, a good combination of, you know, the, the big wheels and the longer wheelbase. Um, but then the granite's got the more fun of the flips, you know, because of the shorter wheelbase. So, um, but just in general, the uh, 3S range, uh, really impressed with it uh, and say, I may get more of them. Okay, that's about it from me. Uh, like I say, I might do a further video uh, just showing in more details those mods that I didn't really go over properly this time. But uh, in the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.